Hello, hi. Welcome back to our latest chapter in Southampton Reviews in Cardiac Thoracic Surgery. In this chapter subset, we'll be discussing function in cardiac physiology. Supervisors for this section include Professor Sonil Ori, our clinical lead and lead for education, as well as Mr. Zabi Miskolche, our consultant other cardiac surgeon, and Mr. Suvatish Lushra, our senior surgical fellow. In, um, in this section, hopefully, by the end of this section, you will be able to answer uh, quite a few questions, such as, for instance, what is the difference uh, between systolic and diastolic heart failure? What is loss of innate rhythm, or what we call no underlying rhythm? When is intraoperative pacing ineffective? In uh, 2002, a famous American movie by the title John Q was produced. It was starred by Denzel Washington. One of these scenes got imprinted in my memory ever since. It showed John Wood as the pronounced heart surgeon who had a signature move at the end of every operation. Um, after he removed the cross lamp, he counted to three, then he touched the heart and voila, it starts beating. At the time, it appeared to me as, as, it if, uh, as if it is a unique skill of the surgeon. Later I discovered that the uniqueness is all in the heart itself. The scene was demonstrating the unique property of the heart function referred to as bathmotropy, or the ability to modify the degree of excitability or irritability. Now let's have a look in here. Um, the heart muscle is extremely unique in the fact that it possesses five essential properties. The, uh, the first property is referred to as inotropy or contractility. The second property is referred to as lucitropy or relaxability. So the heart muscle has to contract and has to relax in order to be able to perform its function. The, th the third function, and here some confusion happens, is referred to as chronotropy or automaticity. It is the ability to generate an innate rhythm which is subsequently modifiable. It can uh, become either faster or slower depending on various neurohormonal mechanisms. Number four is dromotropy or conductivity. And finally, last but not least, is bathmotropy or excitability, which is the ability to modify the heart threshold of excitation. The loss of any of these given properties manifests itself in a different way. For instance, loss of inotropy manifests as systolic heart failure whereas loss of lucitropy manifests as diastolic heart failure, or what cardiologists sometimes refer to as half pef heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Loss of chronotropy manifests as loss of innate rhythm, or sometimes in practice we refer to it as loss of the underlying rhythm. I used to struggle to explain to patients how although the heart has no beat on monitor, once we turn down the temporary pacing, there is nothing, there is zero, yet the heart is fine. Until I find a simple analogy to clarify, the heart is like a car, and even though the battery is down, the engine is fine. All we need is to jump start it, and we would run perfect, perfectly well. Ionotropy resembles the car engine, and chronotropy resembles the car battery. Loss of underlying rhythm occurs in 1-2% to of patients, especially after valve surgery. Most of the time it recovers on its own, sometimes it does not, and we have to insert a permanent pacemaker. Loss of bathmotropy is seen more in pediatric patients, and it manifests as primary rhythm disorder. We sometimes refer to it in practice as flat rhythm. In other words, the heart rhythm does not escalate upon excitation, and we must insert a permanent pacemaker to remediate this. In another example, we use the bathmotropic property of the heart on a daily basis at the end of every surgery. After removing the cross clamp and before placing the temporary pacing uh, leads, some surgeons tend to tap the heart gently. If a contractile response is obtained, then the surgeon can place the leads. If no response is obtained, this means that the heart's contractile functions have not yet recovered. The heart then needs more reperfusion time to restore ATP and energy substrates. This simple maneuver improves the myocardial recovery post-op and limits the reperfusion engine. 
because you cannot just pace a myocardium which has not yet recovered its myocardial or contractility the ionotropy is not back yet so by placing a pacing and exciting the muscle you're only whipping a tired horse we discussed that in the cardiac biochemistry section all you need is to wait allow atp allow reperfusion and then place the uh, uh, pacing leads this is in brief um, um, shining some light upon the unique five properties of the myocardium and explaining how loss of any of these uh, uh, properties will manifest itself differently and how we can use this in clinical practice or in our day-to-day -day activity um, um, dromotropy, of course, loss, losing dromotropy refers to the blocks, first, second, or third degree heart, uh, heart blocks. Losing lucitropy refers to heart um, um, uh, diastolic heart failure. Losing ionotropy is systolic heart failure. Losing the bathmotropy, we discussed that. Um, uh, losing the chronotropy um, uh, is losing the innate rhythm or no underlying rhythm. I hope you enjoyed this very brief chapter subset and uh, hopefully this uh, um, uh, chapter will help you in uh, realizing more and more about your day-to-day -day practices. Uh, um, finally, um, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully we'll meet in the next chapter. I will leave you this MCQ question to test your knowledge. Thank you very much.